Hey there friends, Nibs again. I'm uh, here in the garage tonight doing a little bit of goofing around. And I have a couple of new bring homes to show you guys tonight. Uh, this ought to be pretty quick, but uh, you know how I can get rambling on. But uh, <clears throat> I uh, have a new 22 to show you guys. Uh, that one is actually my own personal property now. <laughs> this other one is a Benjamin 22 caliber. Um, 22 caliber brake barrel nitro piston pellet gun that uh, a friend from the gun store brought in and is going to let me do a little bit of plinking with and testing with and do a review on. But uh, we'll take a look at this one first. This is, uh, again, it's a Benjamin. Um, they call it a Steel Eagle. I did do a little bit of looking on the Crossman website and I didn't find that particular model. I'll do a little more research on it down before I do a review on it. But uh, it is a model BSSN P22TX. And uh, according to the owner of this, he said that this is a Jim Shockey. And I, I'd never heard that name until he told me, but Jim Shockey uh, edition. Apparently Jim Shockey is a big outdoorsman on a lot of the outdoors channels. I watch a lot of those shows. I I have don't ever recall seeing his face or hearing his name. So, but uh, <clears throat> this is uh, supposedly uh, from what I could find, a little bit I could find about it, should be around 800 feet per second um, with a uh, light 22 caliber pellet it should be plenty of power um, it does have an, so a shrouded barrel supposedly uh, internally shrouded or uh, silenced so it should be we'll, we'll tell we'll find out down the road but should be uh, backyard friendly I did see a couple other models that were very similar to this and they were made about 10 years ago. So that, I think this might be when this one was made as well. I haven't found that specific model number yet. <clears throat> but uh, my friend has a, a Bushnell. Uh, this is a four and a half to six, 18 power. I don't believe that's what it would have come with originally, but maybe. It does have a nice... Uh, Nice weaver rail on here. The Bushnell's mounted on weaver rings. So we'll go ahead and uh, get this out and do some testing with it. Maybe in the backyard, maybe at the range. I'm not sure. Let's see how loud it is. See if it's backyard friendly. <clears throat> he said it did have a little bit of bark. So if it's uh, too loud for the backyard, we'll take it over to the... Uh, Take it over to the range so that ought to be pretty cool i'm not sure what kind of trigger mechanism that is but if it's one of those ones that uh, needs the nitro bearing or the uh, nitro rc bearing well maybe we'll uh, take a look at that and uh, so the next one i have is a really cool uh, vintage 22. they didn't make these for very long i'm not sure why look like a pretty nice rifle but this is a winchester model 47 and uh, from what I can find a little bit of research I did on it uh, just for now <clears throat> these started production in around 1948 uh, it was it was commissioned to make this rifle uh, right after World War II ended and uh, went through um, production went through 1954 kind of had thought when I saw those numbers that it might have been a, uh, intended to be a replacement for the 67 and 68 but I, I looked up that model in the 67 and 68 had production all the way up till 1963 and they started in 1934 <clears throat> so obviously that is not the case um, so I'm not sure why Winchester would have made uh, another 
model that would directly compete with the 68, 67, 68, but uh, they did. But these are a lot more uncommon. Um, it is a, a single shot and it has a really nice feed ramp in there. Um, I'll put a picture of that up here so you guys can see that. But uh, according to what the information I found online, it made, so if you just drop the, the uh, 22 round in there and uh, auto aligns and then you can just close it down and uh, not a great trigger but uh, not a terrible trigger either so from what I read online it's supposed to have a safety that kicks on every time you open the bolt and this one is not so I don't know if that was a misprint or if there's something wrong with this one or somebody's modified it so it doesn't do that anymore but uh, I really don't see what about the bolt might have actually done that it doesn't doesn't look like anything's missing there but uh, that would be pretty cool uh, according to some literature I found on this um, online <clears throat> these were offered with uh, either uh, buckhorn sights and a just a post front sight or you could get it with a hooded front sight and uh, delete the buckhorn sight and get it with a a peep sight I'm not sure I couldn't find any information on what kind of peep sights would have came with it but what's on here now is a Redfield very nice Redfield peep sight and uh, I'm not sure what the model is I'll probably have to figure that out too because I need to know everything but uh, it also has a, a Lyman 17a globe up front which i'm fairly certain it did not come with that from the factory um, <clears throat> but uh, it is a really cool little rifle and uh, it, it looks very very similar to a model 68 so i am not sure why they would have made a second second model and uh, been in direct competition with the <laughs> their own rifle but uh, there you go. So that is my new bring homes for for today, and uh, I think these will be a lot of fun. Uh, the Winchester is going in my own personal collection. The Benjamin will be with me for a little while. He said no hurry to get it back to him, uh, so we'll have plenty of time to play with that one and uh, put it through its paces and see what it can do. Uh, it's got a really nice scope on it, so I think we should do be able to do some some nice. 25 50 yard shooting with that guy so hope you guys liked the video till next time have a great day